What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where we learn, do, and talk about photography until we're sick of it. And I think this is going to be maybe the most unusual video that I've ever presented on this channel because instead of being in the outdoors taking photos, we're in my house testing out the, the video capability of the Canon EOS R7 in a test situation that I built inside my product photo box. So while my recent videos have been dedicated to highlighting the stills capabilities of the R7 because I think we've shown that it is a, a capable and competent and compelling stills option, uh, I actually bought the camera to use it for video and uh, over the last almost two and a half months I've been filming festivals, events, uh, ads, commercials, social media spots, and basically anything that anyone will pay me to point the camera at. But in order to get the best use out of the camera, I've had to test and try out all the different recording modes to see which ones are most appropriate for which situations. And today I also had the opportunity to compare the R7 in this uh, test setup against the Canon EOS R6 and the original EOS R. So this is basically every Canon camera that shoots C-Log uh, under, let's say, $3,500. And I wanted to share all that information with you guys so that you could use it to help you decide uh, which camera or which recording mode is most appropriate for your work. So we're going to get right into the testing, uh, starting with a rolling shutter test because that is the most aggravating uh, digital video artifact to me. And it's also some of the hardest uh, testing to find results for. So let's get right into it and see how the R7 stacks up against itself and the competition. <laughs> Okay, so basically all of the cameras exhibited rolling shutter to some degree that I would classify as problematic in their highest quality recording modes, but I really appreciated that the R7 had uh, this sort of halfway between 1080p and its highest resolution 4K. It's like a, a pixel bend or line skipped 4K option that's a little softer than the finest 4K, um, but you can sort of dial it back a little bit to gain some control over the rolling shutter. Uh, the R6 didn't have that. Um, that was the second time that the R6 disappointed me, with the first time being when I when I first switched the R6 from 1080p to 4K and realized that it was imposing a small crop. Uh, I didn't expect that. I think I might have heard somewhere that the R6 might have a, a crop in 4K60, but it actually has a, a slight crop in all of the 4K modes. Uh, it's not a huge thing that would keep me from getting a shot, but I just don't understand how you can justify a $2,500 camera that can't shoot in 4K without a crop. So that test then begged the question, if I'm going to be switching between these different uh, quality modes in order to gain control over rolling shutter and other uh, artifacts and camera behaviors, uh, then what am I losing in terms of image quality and detail between the modes? And so the next test is a detail comparison. So the next test is going to be a high ISO comparison, but before we get into that, let me just say that when I go to the camera, 
When I go to the camera store to uh, make a gear purchase, I make sure to go on that day that the really helpful employee is working so that they get the commission from the sale. And if you found the advice that I gave you here today useful, you can do the same thing for me by making your gear uh, and camera purchases using the affiliate links in the video description. It's no extra cost to you, and it gives me a small commission to reward the work that I put into giving you this advice. All right, so uh, up until now, the, ER, the R6 has had a few disappointments for me, but if it has a chance to pull ahead, it's gonna be in high ISO speed. It's got a great reputation for uh, maintaining quality and detail at higher ISOs, but let's test it out in the photo box and see if it's better and how much better it is, and maybe where the R7 falls in line as well. Okay, so in that test, the R7 really surprised me with its uh, improvements over the original EOS R. Uh, not only was there less noise across all the ISOs, but the noise was that fine dancing noise that cleans up uh, really nicely in post with a little noise reduction. The EOS R had that really coarse, uh, blotchy, static noise that uh, it's hard to take away without losing a lot of detail in the image. And then for once, the R6 surprised me in a negative way. Uh, not only a further leap ahead of the, of the R7 uh, in its noise performance, uh, both in the, the character of the noise, the amount of the noise, but also in having a couple extra stops of ISO for those really low light situations. I thought the R6 looked fantastic in, in the low light test. But unfortunately, I have to stipulate that at this point in the testing, the R6 was getting really, really hot. Uh, it was very hot to the touch. Uh, it didn't overheat. Uh, none of the cameras overheated in my testing. I only had the R6 for a limited time and I was borrowing it from a friend, so I didn't want to subject it to an overheating torture test where like I see how long it takes to basically force the camera to shut down by overheating. Um, but I, I will say that I had the observation that uh, while working with the R7 basically outdoors in the heat all summer, I've never even had it show an, an, uh, an over temperature warning or a heat warning, uh, whereas the R6 was getting very hot in my hands under some uh, pretty light usage of 10 second clips or less in my air conditioned living room. So you can draw from that what conclusion you will. Okay, so next I wanted to do some testing in the light box of dynamic range. What would have been great is if I had enough time with the R6 to do a test where like I underexposed several shots and overexposed several shots and tried to bring it back in the grade to see which cameras do best, but I didn't, I didn't have time to run a detailed comparison like that. So what I did was I set up the box for an exposure where there was some slight clipping in the highlights and the shadows. And then I tried to recover that highlight and shadow detail in the grade to see how the cameras handled, I think, a pretty realistic situation where the scene uh, basically just exceeds the exposure latitude of the cameras. So let's see how they do stacked up against each other in a dynamic range test.
Okay, so I'm really glad that we were able to narrow down the scope of this comparison to video because if we were looking at the photo features, it would be a much more complicated comparison. So comparing the R7 and the EOS R, which I, I think a great valid comparison because for all intents and purposes, these cameras are the same price. I think the EOS R lists for like $1,800, but it's frequently on sale and there's a huge used market for EOS Rs. So you should be looking to pay about $1,500 for either camera. Uh, but in terms of advantages for the EOS R, um, I don't know, it's got, it can record a full frame video, so that's good, but you'll keep in mind that that's restricted to 1080p. That's all I got. So uh, I think the release of the R7 really eliminates the notion that the EOS R is anything like a good value for video. I'd recommend the R7 all day, every day over the EOS R. Comparing the R6 and the R7 is a little more complicated because the R6 can record a full frame field of view in all of its resolutions. Uh, but the R7 still, I found, had several advantages. Some of them I've remarked on throughout this video. It also has no 30 minute recording limit. So I found that to be fantastic. Uh, there was an event where I was doing uh, with the R, which also has a 30 minute recording limit. The R and the R6 both have a 30 minute recording limit. Uh, so I was recording the event with an, with an R and an, the R7 um, on tripods and I had to keep running back to the R wherever I thought there might be a break in the presentation where I could stop recording and start recording again where the R7 I could just let run on the tripod and I didn't have to worry about it through the whole event. For shooters who do occasionally find themselves switching into photo mode, the R6 has got a really clunky process where you have to switch using the mode dial. You gotta like take the camera away, like click four times on the mode dial. And then there is a, a substantial delay switching between photo and video modes. And uh, my friend who owns the camera and lent it to me actually told me that uh, the camera will pretty frequently lock up switching between photo and video modes when he has it in C-Log. He'll have to actually remove and reinsert the battery. I didn't have that experience in my brief testing with it, but I've never had any experience like that with the R7. You switch between photo and video modes using the power switch. So one click to on, which is photo mode, one click to video, and uh, you don't even have to take the camera away from your face and the switch between the modes is basically instantaneous. Switching from photo to video, it's ready to roll shutter. The R7 has Canon's new multi-function shoe that uh, will take accessories like uh, XLR microphone inputs and give them both a digital input into the computer and uh, input to the device to let it be powered by the camera so you don't have to fuss with carrying and charging extra batteries for external professional video devices. All right, so as far as I'm concerned, unless I'm forgetting something important, and uh, please let me know in a comment if I am, unless you mostly shoot at ISO 12,800 or above, or you can't work with the uh, super 35 millimeter field of view of the R7, uh, I was really surprised, but in my testing, I found the R7 to be the more reliable, the more flexible, the more dependable, and generally all around them, the more useful of the two cameras. And it costs a thousand dollars less. So to answer the question of one of the viewers of my stills reviews video, uh, would I recommend the R7 for video? I can't imagine why you would ever be disappointed with this purchase for $1,500. Okay, that wraps up the review of my video. Again, if you found it helpful, you can give it a thumbs up. Recommend subscribing to the channel. I've got my overall conclusions on the R7 as a stills and video camera coming up next time. And until I see you then, you guys keep an eye out and a foot forward and thank you for watching.